Hey everybody, and welcome to Bow and Harrow Workshop. I'm Kate Harrow, and I'm really excited to show you guys these closed-end fountain pens that I've been making. Today we're going to make one out of Amboina Burl, which is beautiful, and we're going to put it on brass hardware. I also opted for a diamond cast accent band, which I'm going to show you how to do in another video. So without further ado, let's get into it. For this fountain pen, I'm going to be using this piece of Amboinia Burl. I think it's really beautiful and it's going to look awesome with our brass hardware. I'm going to measure out two and a half inches for the cap and three and a half inches for the body. Before cutting the blanks on the bandsaw, I made sure to mark with an X where the blanks lined up. This way, when I go to glue the components together, I have grain continuity for the finished pen. We're going to start this process with the blank for the body of our fountain pen. We're going to drill a quarter inch hole down the center of the blank using the lathe. Before I drill, I'm going to square up the end of the blank. This way, when our components are glued in and our two blanks match up, they'll be flush to one another. So here we have the components of our fountain pen kit. The ring between the section and the inner components is what sits flush against the blank. So we're going to drill the length of the inner components at the diameter of the smallest step. We're going to use a quarter inch drill bit, which is just slightly bigger than our smallest part of the components, and drill three inches into the blank, which is just slightly over how deep we need to go. For our next step, we're using a 5 16 drill bit, and I've marked the bit with a sharpie so that I have a visual of where to stop drilling. So now that we've drilled our two smaller sizes, all that's left is to drill for the brass insert. Once again, we've marked our depth on our drill bit, and we're using a 23 64ths bit to drill this final hole. Our next step is to soak the wood with a little bit of thin CA. Even though the wood is stabilized, we want to make sure that we have some extra protection in case of an ink leakage or any sort of other user error. We don't want to leave a puddle in the bottom of the blank, and we don't want to leave a lot of buildup on the sides. So I use a Q-tip to swab around the inside of the void and make sure that all we're doing is saturating the wood. I'm also going to use a little bit of CA accelerator to help speed up the curing process. I also want to mention that this step is only necessary for wood blanks. If you're using a resin blank, you don't have to do this part. Just like we did for the body blank, we're going to square up the cap blank in the lathe. So now we can start drilling our cap blank. We're using a 3 8 drill bit and we want to make sure that we drill deep enough that it covers the entire cap insert plus the ring that is left on the outside of the body blank. We've loaded up our 7 16 drill bit and we're ready to drill the rest of our cap. I've also marked the line with a sharpie again so that we know the depth we need to hit. So now we're ready to glue the components into our pen blank. We're using five minute epoxy for this for a couple reasons. One, it has a great open time, so you have plenty of time to get the work done. And two, it's incredibly strong. I'm using a popsicle stick to apply the epoxy to our pen components so I can scrape off any excess. We want good coverage here to ensure a strong bond, but we also don't want a ton of squeeze out. To glue in the cap insert, I apply epoxy to the inside of the blank, making sure I fully cover all of the exposed wood. You also want to wipe the excess from the face of the blank so that you don't accidentally glue your two blanks together. 
Trust me, I've been there. If the components fit snugly in the holes you've drilled, you'll sometimes create an air pocket inside the blank that makes it want to push apart. I use a squeeze clamp with gentle pressure to make sure that everything fits properly. Now that our epoxy has dried, we're going to thread our mandrel onto the blank and secure it in the collet chuck. These mandrels fit perfectly in a 3 8 collet. Once we have everything snug and secure, we can start turning the pen to shape. Unfortunately, disaster strikes in three, two, one. Let's watch that one again. Well, that was uh, a little scary. I completely blew up that blank <laughs> on the lid. Um, but we got it glued back together. I did not film myself gluing it back together, but it went back together pretty simply. Um, luckily it was clean break, uh, not really any bits missing from it. So I went ahead and, uh, and got some glue on it and, and got it back together. So luckily we are in good shape and we're back together. So now I'm going to put a CA finish on it and, uh, and finish it up for you guys. So woo! if you're working with Burl, um, make sure that when you go to part off the end, you do it smarter than I did, so. So after that excitement, I'm able to turn the nub off the end of the pen and sand it flush. I sand the entire blank with 240 and then 400 Abernet sanding mesh before moving on to CA. Okay, so that was, that was scary, but we've got everything glued back together. You can see the crack where the blank broke. So if you go to part this off and you're working with a burl, make sure you, uh, you do a better job than I did. But we got it glued back together. We are um, sanded back down so that everything's flush. You can't even feel where it broke. So that's awesome. So now I'm gonna put a finish on it. I'm doing a CA finish on this pen because of the fracture that it has. Normally with a wood blank, I would use a friction polish for a more natural feel, but I want to ensure as much strength and stability as possible here. I'm using Mercury Flex CA and boiled linseed oil for my finish. I start with a coat of boiled linseed oil that I let soak into the wood for a few seconds before wiping off the excess. I'm applying very little pressure here, just making sure I have consistent coverage. A typical CA finish for me consists of two to three coats of thin mercury flex, followed by six to eight coats of medium. Because of our oops-a-daisy earlier, I'm doing a few extra coats of thin on this one for good measure. Between each coat of CA, I use a light spray of accelerator to help cure the finish. Here I'm moving on from the thin CA and starting to use the medium. Check that out. Now we can move on to everyone's favorite part, sanding. I'm starting with a wet piece of 400 Abernet just to knock down the high spots. Once we wipe the water off and inspect the blank for any flaws, we can switch to the polishing paper of your choice. I'm using a green micromesh pad here only because I ran out of Zona paper. Typically I'd be using just the first Zona paper for this part. Next I'm using a product from Stadium Pen Blanks called Magic Juice. This is an awesome abrasive paste that does wonders for your finish. It's a six bottle set of varying grits, but for wood I tend to just use the number 35 compound, which is the most coarse. I'll put a link in the description below if you want to try it out. Hashtag not sponsored. At this point we can start turning our cap blank, and the second verse is the same as the first. We're going to turn our blank down to size, part off the end, sand to 400, and apply our CA finish. The only real difference on the cap blank is I put a piece of blue tape around the mandrel just to make sure that we don't glue our blank to the mandrel. Once again, we're polishing with micro mesh followed by Stadium Pen Blank's Magic Juice. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I decided to add a diamond cast accent band to the cap of this pen. I'll show you how to do that part in a future video. For now, we're pretty much done. All that's left is to screw the section into the body of the pen and take some glamour shots.
can't thank you all enough for watching this video. I really love this pen and I'm really excited that I get to keep it for myself. It's one of those happy accidents that happens in the shop sometimes. If you're interested in these pen kits, I'll have a link down in the description below to where you can get them as well as where you can get the magic juice polishing compound that I use and other things that I may have used in this video. I really hope you learned something and I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. That way you don't miss my next video when it comes out and you'll get to learn another tip or trick at the lathe um, or whatever else I happen to be working on that week. Once again, I'm Kate Harrow from Bow and Harrow Workshop and I can't thank you enough for watching this video. Until next time, have fun out there.